agenda item came up, the Board of Commissioners was looking at reviewing a, a document that Baker County had adopted related to uh, land use planning and coordination between Baker County and the state and local government. And the Board of Commissioners asked me to take a look at it, and that brought forward a discussion of, of maybe having a discussion about what Jackson County had already implemented as it related to federal coordination and the ordinance that was adopted by the county. So to give some background, um, the count, Jackson County adopted a federal coordination policy, it's chapter 1213 of the Jackson County Codified Ordinances. It was adopted in 2011, and it sets forth the county's position as it relates to coordination. Um, I, free, I spoke within the past six months with NRAC regarding the difference between coordination and cooperation, so I don't, unless someone has any questions on that, I don't necessarily see a need to talk about what exactly coordination is. I was more going to focus on what the county's federal coordination ordinance states, and then if anybody has any questions, be available for any of those. So the, the county did adopt uh, an ordinance setting forth the county's federal coordination policies, chapter, as I said, 1230 of the county codify ordinance. Um, the first section is just background. It establishes the county's interpretation of the federal coordination laws that, is based, that allow local governments to coordinate uh, planning and permitting activities with federal actions. Um, there are several different laws, there's multiple laws. The, the main ones as they relate to Jackson County are the Federal Land Policy Management Act, or FLIPMA, um, and that governs BLM's management of BLM lands. Additionally, there's the National Forest Management Act, um, which governs the U.S. Forest Service and their uh, lands within their management jurisdiction in Jackson County. Both uh, FLIPMA and the National Forest Management Act have coordination requirements, um, but they are different and distinct. Um, each act governs the actions of the particular federal agency who is covered, so um, the U.S. Forest Service has no obligation to follow any of the national, uh, the federal uh, FLIPMA. Similarly, BLM has no obligation to follow any requirements under the National Forest Management Act unless there's a specific call out to them. There's one specific call out, when, um, for example, to the U.S. Forest Service under FLIPMA in a very specific situation that doesn't particularly relate to coordination with local governments. Um, so the function of the, the, is the adopted in the ordinance, the function of the county's federal coordination policy is to provide a sound policy basis to negotiate formal procedural agreements with the individual federal agencies. So there are, as I said, there are statutory requirements under federal law for local, gov the, for local governments to be allowed to coordinate with federal agencies or permit uh, coordination with federal agencies. However, there is not, there, there are call-outs of requirements. They don't have specific procedural agreements. And so one of the things that the county was seeking in passing this ordinance was to enter into formal coordination agreements with the federal agencies to provide the specifics. So we have a requirement to coordinate. The requirement to coordinate doesn't talk about how that's going to be done. And so the county was seeking to enter into agreements um, to specify the exact procedures that would be followed. Um, as of this date, we don't, the county does not have any formal agreements with any of the federal agencies on. Whoa. I like a bird. Um, does not have any formal agreements with any of the federal agencies as it relates to coordination and how it's going to be implemented. Though recently, one of the federal agencies in a public meeting stated he would be, that the regional um, head of that agency stated he would be interested in looking at, at entering into such an agreement. So that, that may be something on the horizon. The local forest. Local forest? Yeah, rather than the local The local forest. Yeah. yeah, so I was, so yes, the, the, the local forester for the U.S. Forest Service for our area indicated he would be interested in at least talking about um, an agreement to establish coordination requirements, or coordination uh, procedures. Um, and, there's, and I guess there's some reasons, and, and I've talked about it in, in the public meeting before. There have been a few cases where local governments have sought to sue the feds over a failure to coordinate. Um, this hasn't happened much, but for the most part, when a court does look at it, if a court finds that coordination has not been followed, um, a court basically says, well, coordination doesn't require the federal agency to do anything. Like, it doesn't impact the final decision. So coordination is essentially an opportunity for the local government to provide input, and then the federal agency has to attempt to, within the agency's own discretion, have its plans fit with the local government's plans. 
but in the end, uh, coordination is very specific that there's no ceding of federal sovereignty. So the feds have sovereignty over the state, have precedence over the states and the local governments. And so coordination is very explicit that there's been, they don't, they don't see the final decision making. Yes. So does the county have any standing different from any other entity, like a NGO or a citizen? Yes, so coordination, as called out in uh, FLIPMA and the National Forest Management Act, gives local governments a specific right to coordinate um, or, or provides for an avenue for coordination between the local governments. There is no similar right to call out to a local, to a, 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 an NGO or, or an, anyone who doesn't have specific authority under the statute. But that doesn't prohibit, for example, the Forest Service or the BLM from talking to any of those uh, NGOs. They, they don't have a right to, to participate in the process, but they're not specifically prohibited from participating in the process. Whereas the county has a right and can't be excluded from participating in the coordination process. Uh, the next sort of section of the county code talks about the overarching policies of the county. So uh, when it comes to coordination, the county, just to sum it up, the county asserts its maximum rights to coordination. Um, page, and, you? Uh, page 44, or two, <laughs> depending yeah. on how many okay. pages you have. Uh, so the county asserts its maximum rights to coordinations uh, with all federal agencies. And so as I said, there is specifically, what, as it relates to the US Forest Service and the BLM specific statute to talk about coordination. However, there may be other statutes that apply to smaller agencies um, which call for coordination, and that is different, again, from the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, which talks about coordination, or cooperation between local governments who may have information related to decisions that federal agencies make. Um, the next page, uh, which is labeled 45, or maybe the next page, talks about the coordination agreement that the county is going to seek. And that uh, finally, the county recognizes and respects the federal government has many priorities. So it, it talks about what the county would like to see when it comes to changes in federal policies. And then it also recognizes that the, the holdings of the federal government's land may change from time to time. And so it calls out that the county, what the county would like to see when it comes to changes in federal land ownership. The next section specifically deals with federal land uh, management policy. So it describes what the county's policies of how it would like to see the federal government's management of the lands within the county. Uh, first talks about forest and range land policies um, and what the county would like to support and see when it comes to the management of forest lands and range lands. Um, then it talks about specifically the ONC Act. So the ONC Act applies to a very narrow set of counties as opposed to the counties that um, or local governments who have general jet lands that are generally managed by BLM. So it talks about what the county would like to see when it comes to the policies of the county, how it would like to see the OSC lands um, managed. It talks about mining policies and what, how the county would like to see, or and not mining policies, energy policies and how the county would like to see the federal lands managed as it relates to energy, uh, mining, recreation, uh, low impact recreation uses, high impact recreation uses, and then finally national security. So it talks about the county and how it would like to see the federal lands within the county managed as it relates to the various priorities that, um, and, and, pol and policies that, uh, that govern the management of federal lands. Um, next we talk about, uh, the next section is 1231.04, uh, air and water resources. Um, and so it talks about the county's policy regarding how to plan for land use as it relates to air and water uh, resource issues. Um, Next, it, occur, it talks about endangered species, and so it talks about how the county would like to see the policy of the county as it relates to listing of endangered species that, that um, occur in Jackson County. Uh, and part of the listing, so there's sort of two multiple things that happen when it comes to an endangered species being listed. The animal itself gets listed, and that sort of sets certain criteria as it relates to individual animals, and there's also the critical habitat designation. And so the next section of this, or subsection of this section, talks about the county's policies when it takes to uh, critical habitat uh, designation. Um, it talks about a safe harbor, you know, the county's policies it relates to safe harbor agreements. So when there are habitat or animals occurring on private land, um, agreements between the agency and the private landowner as it relates to uh, how that land will be managed. Um, 
The next section deals with the uh, county's policy relates to federal project review. So a certain, uh, this is the NEPA section. So NEPA requires uh, a federal agency to do an environmental assessment um, of any federal apps, certain projects that are either generally federally funded or occur on federal land or require federal permitting. Um, requires there to be a, a, an environmental policy analysis. Um, this sets forth the county's policies. It relates to the, the review of those. This would be the, the county sort of op operating as a court, as a cooperating agency under NEPA. So it talks about you know water works and recreational development and sort of the other things that are important and uh, uh, appropriately is reviewed as part of a NEPA analysis. So in general, it, the county's ordinance is, I guess, to sum it up, is seeking to assert its, its its right under the various federal coordination laws to participate in the federal agency decision making process as it relates to federal lands or federal projects that occur or are located in Jackson. Questions? Yeah, I have a question and comment. Do you know what precipitated the effort to go into coordination because they do, do the coordination uh, exercise? Because four of us here were on the initial group that did the study with Craig Stone Associates to put this together. And I think it's being lost in, in the whole mix of things is that the reason. This was undertaken because there was concern about withdrawing more land from the county and more public use and or timber and grazing rights because of the monument group for the time. Mm -hmm. And that's why it came into being. Correct? One, 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 one was the major reason because it, it was really a major concern after having seen Soda Mountain and the other monument. I mean, they're, they're, they still want to create a monument that's over a thousand square miles. And so that's still the happened. So that's the reason we undertook that exercise, the primary reason. So, and I think it helps to have that history behind you when you look at this, because the agencies were not talking to anyone, and we wanted a place at the table. We wanted the county to make sure they had considerations. And a lot of this stuff was being done behind the scenes when nobody knew about it except the agency and the uh, secretary. And I see it, there's, we're still operating that way. They're bringing us things that they've already decided without coordination. So the how to we enact it, I think, is bringing the teeth to it, perhaps. I think one of the problems is you've got to talk to the course supervisor and the district manager from the appropriate agencies and make sure they know. They don't think about it. It's not a part of their considerations. They know you want to be at the table. You want to be a part of the decision making. And until that is known you know, specifically, you know, bright lights, whatever, you're just going to keep going. And I, I guess and a good example is where the county has, has sort of implemented the federal coordination policies. Uh, BLM recently put out the, the draft of the proposed RFP. Um, I guess I'm trying to, there's, you know, I guess because we're now operating on the Northwest Forest. Northwest plan with because we rolled back to when the whopper got tossed out. So that was one of the things where the county, um, when they put out the draft RFP, we put the board approved and put out a letter making comments. And the vast majority of our comments were focused on a failure to follow the process when it comes to uh, resource management planning on federal lands. And that, that was where the majority of the, of the county's comments were is that there wasn't a following of the coordination process when it came to developing that plan that the county wanted to basically go back and, and have it, its spot at the right time in the process um, to the development of that resource management plan. So in this instance, this ordinance basically says that we have a policy in the county that you consider our policies, which is part of coordination. In other words, this is just another policy that says, or that we want them to, to consider. Uh, prior to doing what they're supposed to mandated to do under, under coordination, which is consider all of our county policies anyway. So is it, has it been more effective? I mean, you know, that's, I think one of the reasons that this was brought up is because we uh, kind of want to be brought more up to speed on, on exactly what has happened, what um, uh, this has done, um, and are we making progress? I think that was my. I think it has, all, has to almost be an insistence that you be involved with us. You know, we want to know at the outset what you're planning to do that, you know, whether it be 
you know, um, grazing rights, withdrawn, timber rights. I mean, timber rights are everything through this county, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone says we're under the Northwest Forest Plan. We still have the ONC Act of 37 in effect. That's still the governing documentation right now. And that's largely been ignored by the new resource management plan. They just haven't discussed it. So for me, I think that uh, I think that they're not going to willingly uh, cooperate uh, on anything. I think that the county has to take a very proactive stance and be at their door. Uh, I don't think they're going to come to the county and say, hey, we'd like to, to talk about what our plans are. I just don't think, I just don't think that's going to happen. They won't do it. I thought, that, I thought that's what those specifics were supposed to be that were going to get developed. Because just having a general thou shalt coordinate isn't done. That, that's my problem has been too, that yeah, we have something that says we're supposed to coordinate and we should do more, but then that's where the conversation seems to stop. And I, you know, I asked the other day, well, what is the action plan? And is it litigation? Is it, what, what is the action plan from this point forward? I mean, and yeah, I was just going to say, we should probably talk a little bit on how we got to this point. The Baker County plan came out, and everybody was talking about how great the Baker County plan was. And it's been, they've been boasting on how it's done so much in their community to do things. And, and frankly, after you look at what they've done in their community, it's the same things that we've done here over a cup of coffee with the same individuals. But I did bring that plan to this committee and asked this committee, committee to take a good look at it and find out how we could develop something similar that's here in Jackson County that would have a little bit of tea that we could that we could use. And the discussion revolved around our ordinance and what we have here, our comprehensive plan, what it entails. And I think it even expanded, you might correct me if I'm wrong, it even expanded that there's more to it because it goes into the HIFRA. The, the 2003 HIFRA is not involved in any of our documents um, and that gives us a lot more rights that Congress recognized here recently that we don't even have written into these documents yet. So the, the concept that I've been talking with the NRAC committee about as a liaison for the last several months is getting their minds wrapped around all these different pieces and parts and then how do we take and develop a new document that really does what we needed to do here in Jackson County. Because I think we're all on the same page that we want to be back in the woods. We want to get our back into the grazing. We want to have an active role in the management practices or, the, or what the management is going to look like in the decision-making process. Um, so that, that's what the, the discussion is. And so it's, that's bringing our board up to speed. On the NRAC side, our board had a discussion here the other day regarding a SFAC meeting where we had the Region 5 and Region 6 um, foresters and we had the Region 5 deputy forester here in Jackson County. It was a very strong meeting where the recommendation and Region 5 basically agreed to do it. Region 6 was a little bit hesitant is to create a uh, a committee directly under the regional supervisor that consists of the local governments and those people that are supposed to be making the decisions at the under the um, NEPA and no, excuse me the HIP excuse me my, all these acronyms of, of the um, thank you under FLIPMA National Forest Management Act putting those those people together coming up with that plan and then going out to the NGO. So that's, that essentially creates what we're looking for, and they've agreed to that on the five, even though it doesn't meet the Jackson County side or looking to develop that. We're trying to uh, get Mr. Pena to do that at the regional level. Uh, what Joel referred to earlier was that um, Rob McWhorter, basically, where we could take and do something very similar here, he basically said, I could buy into that, but we'd have to put that, that cooperative agreement type piece together in how we're going to operate. There's a lot of discussion on big C versus little c. Uh, and there's, do we say, coordination, coordination, coordination as per FLIPMA and National Forest Management Act, 
or do we come up with a document that says we're going to agree to work together and let's take that coordination piece set aside for now, even though we know our rights, but that seems to be the diplomatic piece that's tearing everybody apart, is that word. And that's what's keeping everybody from coming together at the table. So putting that document together that says, hey, let's work together, this is how we're going to work together, and accomplishes exactly what we're looking for, and trying to capture that in writing, capture all this stuff into a, a document, is it going to be something like the Baker County document, or do we need to look at our chapter 12 turn one and modify this to encompass those other good pieces? And I think that's kind of why the recommendations, let's have a joint committee meeting, uh, commissioners and an NRAC committee, and say, let's, let's really have a frank discussion on the subject of what we really want to see out of here, set those overarching goals. And then my recommendation was to use the NRAC committee to be able to use that heavy lift, so to speak, to create the document with the support of staff, Mm -hmm. So that you're not working alone and you have the lawyers and you have the subject matter experts being able to feed into this so you can get back to us so that we can we can vet this out just like we would with anything else. So that's that's the way this I just want to go back and revisit that sort of that process and path for those people who didn't understand both sides. Well there's there's, still going. there's uh, two levels that you can look at this from, you can look at it from the standpoint of this county taking on the, the government agencies here in this area to try to get coordination to work. And in order to do that, what uh, we talked about before, Commissioner Greenfall is if the county has a good plan, a good resource management plan, then you have something to hang your hat on and say, this is what we'd like you to coordinate. Otherwise, you're just talking about a lot of legal information, and of course, that hasn't been very successful in my standpoint because they don't even want to, they don't even feel like they have to have a coordination agreement signed by each other because they know that it has very little teeth. But the more we can put on, on a piece of paper that says this is what our plan is, and this is what is important to us, and we know what those things are, um, then you got a little more standing. And, them coordinating against that plan. Uh, the other problem is, of course, if you're talking about one or two county areas down here dealing with the local agencies, the problem is much bigger than that. The local agencies, including the BLM uh, district manager and the Forest Service foresters, don't have very much power to do anything. They are strictly following, the, they're following the laws that they have to follow out of Washington. And, and they're, they're overridden by those laws, and they're doing the best they can to try to get things going and keeping coordination and more sustainable operations and multi-use operations, but they're, they're stymied by it. So it's, a, it's a, a national problem, or at least a regional problem for the West, that we don't have uh, any flexibility in managing the lands that you know, affect the county so very much. I mean, there's 50 percent of the line in the county belongs to the federal government. And, you know, I use the analogy that if, if we get fires in this area like we think we might, it's going to, well, how much land is the county have in forest here? I don't think BLM has, uh, uh, let's see, about 800,000 acres in, in the Memphis district. And um, it's a lot of land. And if half of it burns up uh, in the coming years, the policy out of the government is we don't go and salvage those areas. I mean, we've seen that happen in the last few years. We've had all these fires. Well, where, where does the breaking point? They all burn up. We have no resources left. And if they burn up, you know, 1,000 acres a year. Um, so there's, the county is the, is the ultimate loser in anything that happens on those on that 50 percent of land base. And, uh, and I feel the county, myself, I feel the county hasn't exerted the authority that they should have and do have uh, to manage that property better or have it managed by someone else better. It's, it's pathetic, actually. Mm -hmm. can do. I would agree that it's, it's a little frustrating, but the thing that it, I, I was going to fall back on the, on the language here, and it's very broad and it's very nebulous. Keep apprised of local use plans, um, resolving any inconsistencies to the extent practical. Now, there's a big difference of how somebody, what would they consider practical? And they can say, well, this is what we consider practical. It's done, we coordinate it. 
And you know, those things seem to only be able to be uh, resolved in litigation. You know, somebody has a different interpretation of what the statute means, and they feel they, they uh, did what they were supposed to do. The only way you can assert what you thought they were supposed to do generally um, is, is litigation. And that's an expensive proposition that usually doesn't pan out too much. So that's why, you know, even though it seems a little bit like a passive approach, what you're talking about here, you know, is something that maybe hasn't been tried and uh, may yield some better results. It's sort of, I don't mean to cut you off, Commissioner, but you're, you're hitting on the definition of insanity. And I, as over the last several three years, I've been studying what's been done, what we continue to do, and I keep going back to that definition of insanity. We keep trying the same things over and over again. We're expecting a different result. At what point in time do we sit there and say, let's change the game plan and hope, see how that, how that little interjection changes the bigger picture and sort of measure that, sort of exactly what the Commissioner Dyer was saying. Because if I read page one of our own policy, one, two, three, and four, is basically right out of FLIPMA. Those are, that's federal language. That's not language that we invented. That's their language that we pulled out of federal law. So, I mean, it's, it's that broad. So how do we narrow the scope on a local level and get that exactly what you were talking about, bring us all together? I'm sorry, Commissioner. That's okay. <clears throat> well, I just, um, I think it, a passive approach is what we've taken, what I've seen taken. And we have congressional support with all the statutes for coordination, period. And I think to take, well, let's just cooperate and, and get it done. Really, I think, is a sub standard path, I think, to take. But you've got um, 43 U.S.C. 1740, you've got 16 U.S.C. 1600, 16 U.S.C. 1604, Executive Order 12, 898 tons of backing that said they must coordinate. And instead, we're taking passive report, passive approach, in my opinion, since I've been here, we've seen roads closed, we've seen them come in and tell us what they're gonna do, they've given us an RMP that doesn't even meet uh, anything close to the ONC Act. And we've got the ONC Act too, and we have, let's do something different. It's like saying, it will speed 55, but you know what? You're not doing that, let's just settle down, you know, or let's just make it go to do 75. You know, it, it seems compromising to me. And I would love nothing more than to have something more aggressive that would work, but it seems like no matter what it says, no matter how many times it says they must coordinate, it falls back to this language, and they can say, resolving any inconsistent, well, keep apprised of local plans, considering local land use plans, developing federal land use plans, and re resolving any inconsistencies between local and federal use plans to the extent practical. Now, that's the, the extent practical is where. Isn't that our language, though? No, that's, that's, that's said right. federal, federal law. Yeah, no. Which law is that one? That's what law. That's what the coordination what plan number is. That one. Because 1740 says, Thou shalt promulgate rules and regulations to carry out the purposes of this act. It says, Shall. It doesn't say, Come well, closer if it's possible. And to assert those rights, or to assert what we perceive and we define as those rights, and when they're at odds with what they define them as, or what they see their responsibilities being. I mean, there, you run up against that. The only, the only tool at that point is litigation. You know, to say, well, we, well, I haven't seen we us exercise like our coordination rights. So if I, if I may, for the last 20 years of, of working with the agencies, with the industry and, and uh, the county, uh, my observation has been that they have their planning process, and even though these regulations exist, and they're required to, they continue with the planning process until they get to the point where a commissioner or somebody calls their attention to it. At that point, they have their meeting, but their plans have basically already been made. Mm -hmm. And that's where, I don't think it's a, a matter of questioning the, the regulations. It's a matter of that proactive being involved, involving ourselves up front and knowing that if they know that they have to predict that someone is going to be on this, uh, we're more apt to get a, a much better result from them. I've, I've observed that for 20 years. Uh, but see, that, that, that isn't going to help unless you have a sound plan and sound, uh, I guess, 
battle points or whatever, or what you want, you expect from uh, the way our manage, our land should be managed in the county. That's right. I, and I've and, read and, the and, I've read the Baker County plan, and uh, I, I see a lot of benefit to Jackson County uh, uh, developing a similar plan that meets our needs because it's it's something that mm -hmm. that uh, we've taken the time to do that planning and something to take to the table. Yeah. My biggest fear in, in, in this process and why I keep asking all these plans, plans, plans is because if I read FLIPMA and I read the National Federal Mortgage Management Act, they're not required to coordinate with the individual. There's no individual coordination requirement whatsoever. It's with our existing plans. And frankly, if we don't have our plans in place, it doesn't matter how much we go to court or we go to file a lawsuit, we're going to lose because we're going to say, what, what plans are you trying to coordinate with? Well, I was at the table. That doesn't meet the definition of coordination. So by getting these plans built and having our plans, having that rock solid foundation that we come together and do this as a team, then down the road, if we don't, if we start hitting that spot, we've built this beautiful case and now we can file for that litigation at that magic moment. But if we don't, if we don't have the foundation in place, we'll never be able to get to that a successful litigation. So that's why I keep focusing back on these plans. I go back to our wildfire protection plan. I go back to the, the HIFRA. I look at our, our chapter 1231. I look at all these different things and say, we're missing components. We're missing the, some key pieces here, and we're not keeping them current under federal legislation. And, and unless we do that, if we need to go file one day, we're never going to be successful because we're not even staying current ourselves. So that's why I'm asking, trying to bring us together. I mean, we've talked about it quite a bit in, on the committee areas. Yeah. I think it's, it's uh, reasonable for a county to take it on head on. And like you say, I think it needs to have good plans in place so that you can keep going even if you have to go to uh, litigation later. But it, it also requires that you have the second level I was talking about at the national level. It also has to be going through the ONC County Association and so on to do the same thing at a national level because a lot of the problems that we're dealing with is what I said is that the local agencies have no, re they can't disobey the, the uh, National Wild, uh, right. Wildlife uh, Act and they can't disobey the, the Water Act and they can't disobey this act and that. So they're just working between all those acts trying to get something done. And uh, it's just not hardly anything getting done. And it's all started with the Northwest Forest Plan, which was basically an administrative plan uh, by the president. And they just threw in things at the kitchen sink during that plan. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, for instance, the, uh, the science said that you could leave one tree length on the side of the stream buffer one tree. Well, they decided to make it two just by administrative decision. And now they're coming back to the, to the point where we're going to believe the original scientific evidence says, well, you really only need one. On the right period, Depen it? Depending on the size of the stream and so on. But there was a lot of things thrown <coughs> into that plan which were nice to have. You know, they were just, well, we got a chance here. We'll do all this uh, extra stuff. Right. I was looking at, I was there with the RMP when they introduced it in Salem to the elected officials. And if, when I saw that introduction, I started taking notes. And the, the impacts of the communities in that NEPA analysis were never really brought into effect. They never looked at the healthy, health impacts of a, of a, a community based on non-management. So there's a lot of pieces in that NEPA analysis that I think that we can start tying into our plans that we that basically say, if you're going to coordinate, you're going to use these specific pieces because that's the impact to our community. And that talks about the health impacts, that talks about the, the, the uh, eye ear, the, what happens at the hospital as a result of that smoke in our community for three months out of the year. Uh, bringing that type of stuff into our plans and then making them mitigate them during the NEPA analysis is going to give us a little bit of a click to the advantage piece because now they just don't throw us aside. It, it, because it, it, in my opinion, what it does is it starts at least leveling the playing field that we're just as important as an endangered species <laughs> as they do the NEPA.
you can take a legal approach to some of the things that you aren't coordinating against or you want to respond to it, you just say, well, uh, that's against the ONC Act. And then, and then the, have, them, have someone answer that. Right. They'll say, well, it is. Well, then you're going to stutter for a while and say, what are we going to do about that? Well, I don't know. Then let's get the plans in place so we can have the conversation. So that could be a county response. Whatever you're, at, mm -hmm. that you're planning on doing, it's against the ONC Act. Do we have any uh, case law on <coughs> what the extent of practical means? Has anyone challenged that? Uh, not specifically as related to this section. However, the general, so the, the general sort of case law holds that if a federal agency is given a duty under federal law, then they are given a lot of discretion on how they interpret the federal statute and what their duty is. So the default is to trust the federal agency that what they're doing means, if they interpret the statute to mean X, and they're doing X based upon that, or Y based upon that interpretation, the default is that the executive branch is given the discretion on, on how it interprets the statute it's supposed to do. So it's ultimately up to the county or, or another challenger to show that their interpretation was not a reasonable interpretation or fell outside the, the statute. So the default is, is whatever beyond says the statute is, is given deference by courts. But that's not, that's not as it relates specifically to coordination, that's sort of the general principle um, that governs all federal law that provides requirements upon federal agencies to, to do things. But they haven't included any more of a detailed description or definition of what extent practical means. Not that, that I'm aware of. And that's why, that's what keeps lawyers working. Right. I mean, ultimately, and, and this is a question that the Commissioner Dyer ever put out there, is ultimately we can, the county can assert its coordination and, and rights um, or argue that the, the decisions that BLM or the U.S. Forest Service are making violate federal law or in the example of the ONC Act, but in, until the county or someone else is willing to, litigation is the only way to solve that. Um, ultimately, if someone disagrees with our interpretation of what, if it violates the ONC Act or not. Uh, we don't have any sort of unilateral or, or mechanism by which we can, outside of the, the court system, outside of litigation, to, to make anybody do anything. So the question for the group is then, is adding um, more uh, completeness to our coordination policy, adding more details, will that strengthen our coordination standards? Like, because you feel bigger plans was more specific. Well, their their natural resource plan uh, uh, is very specific. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's something we don't have. So, when you request coordination, do you do it <coughs> just at the local level, or do you go to the regional level as well? So, because all policy is coming down from. When we requested, no. when the county requested coordination, it was sent to the local level, to the state level, or I guess I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to remember how the federal government, we sent it to the local level, we sent it to the regional level, which I think is a group of local levels. We had sent it to the state level, we sent it to the district level, and we sent it to the secretaries themselves. Um, for the most part, um, and, and this is a general sort of statement, I don't have the specific responses. Uh, most people didn't respond at all. A couple of people responded um, that they were not interested. Um, no one responded that they would be willing to enter into an agreement. And, and again, I think it goes back to, to something that we've discussed in the past. Uh, when agencies have, or when local governments have sued under coordination, um, to, to kind of give it a very, a very summary answer, courts say, yeah, they may have violated, but no harm, no foul, because they could make any decision they want. The one case I could find where they actually found that there was a problem and, it, and they made the, the federal agency sort of go back and restart its planning dealt with not a general coordination lawsuit, but in this particular case, a county or a local, I think it was a county, had actually entered into an agreement on this as the procedures to follow coordination um, with the BLM and it had to deal with a horse round, a plan for horse roundup, wild horse roundup. And they didn't follow the contract. And so the court said, well, this isn't, they didn't just violate the statute, they actually violated a written agreement with you. So now they have to go back and they have, it, it was more of a breach of contract claim as opposed to a statutory violation claim. 
And so that was the one case where, where they made the federal agency, the courts in, uh, ordered the federal agency to sort of go back to the beginning of the planning process because they didn't follow their contract with the local government, not because they didn't follow um, a coordination statute. That's why they didn't sign up the agreement. That's what you're saying. That, that, I, I mean, I, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to get, I don't know necessarily, I don't want to sure. guess what gets in people's yeah. heads, but yeah, I think that's my ass. Exactly. Probably a memo saying don't sign any more agreements at that point. But, how many years ago was it sent? Uh, four? I think four, four, and then we followed them up probably again two, three years ago maybe? That was a little less than that. I mean, we reasserted everything here just before we, two of you guys came on. It might have been maybe, maybe like two and a half years ago. Yeah, between a year and 18, two years. We, we sort of followed up with some letters. Mm -hmm. yeah. We reasserted those same at the same levels across the board. It probably never even reached the level of, of the solicitors in the BLM council. It, it, Actually, it did. It did go those letters, the last go around, um, did reach them. Uh, I maintain contact with Randy and Cynthia. Uh, Randy is the local government liaison direct to the chief of the Forest Service. So if we have issues with, with the anything, we can pick up the phone, have a relationship with him. Say, hey, Randy, this is what's going on. This is where we're having problems. Cynthia is the BLM straight to the director of the BLM. So State director. What's that? State director. Federal. Federal. This is all on the federal side. The number one person for both of those agencies. Uh, pick up the phone, talk to them. I've had long conversations with both of them on this subject, exactly what we're discussing right now. And with both of them, they've basically clued me in saying, look, unless you have your solid plans in place, you don't have anything, and that's where people mess up. It's not like we're trying to derail things, it's just there's a process. And everybody thinks it happens this way, this way, this way, this way. And every, it's, it's like spaghetti. Everybody has a different re recipe on how to get there. But reality, this is our recipe. And if you follow the plans and you follow our process, you're going to be really successful. And I think they, when I, when I talk about reasserting the coordination rights, and I'm sitting there with members from, uh, commissioners from Utah, and that same hardcore coordination, just we're going to sue, conversation, it's still the same conversation. This is how you get exactly what you're asking for, but you have to have your plans in place. And it started with a conversation that we were in, we were in D.C. with the uh, director for Fish and Wildlife on the federal side. And he flat came out and said, the Endangered Species Act is not written to recover any species. It is written so only to maintain the species at the level at which the time it was listed. So if uh, a species had 10 at the time of listing, it's their job to maintain 10 and no more. If they recover based on everything that everybody else does, then that's a success. But the Endangered Species Act is only written to hold the species that, so they won't lose any more species of that, of that particular uh, species. So that sort of started the whole process. Well, why are you guys doing all this when that's their work? Well, it's because no one's asserting this. And frankly, we can even on a local level, on the ESA, we can write and enter an agreement with Fish and Wildlife through this process that says this is how we're going to mitigate uh, the loss of that species on a local level to, to prevent the listing. And that's how we were very successful on a national level with the stage grouse is because all of a sudden, all the counties and locals start putting in local protection or local plans on how to mitigate the sage crowds decline before it was listed. And with all that going into effect, it held back the national listing. So I'm looking at that and saying, okay, there's, there's our pathway. We're not putting in, when these species are getting listed, we're not offering up a different plan, so their plan automatically just gets pushed through. So if we don't start getting on this plan page, we're going to get out planned. And that's essentially what's happening to us, is they're out planning us. And I don't know how else to say it, but it all boils down to plans, because a cup of coffee at lunch does not coordinate with anything or meet any legal definition. It's great. It's got us a lot of great things on the fire recovery that we had up on the Green Springs. We were able to talk about categorical exclusions, we were talking about roadside harvests, all that kind of stuff, and they actually pulled a lot more out because we offered up things to them. 
But at the same time, it was a very big success for the county. But there's nothing in planning that says this is how we're going to get there. Now, in the case of the uh, Bottled Elk, uh, you know, there's so much scientific evidence and, and information being collected about the Spotted Elk, and the projections are that the population is going down. And, and so... It'll be eradicated in the next Well, the, years. the answer to that is to take all of the lands in the federal government and put them as Spotted Elk habitat, which they've done. But there is no evidence, they don't really know why it's going down. Sure, they think maybe because the, uh, the uh, habitat is going down. But of course, it could be the barn also, which is a significant part of it. It could be uh, urban encroachment on the, on the habitat. So there really isn't any one particular reason why it's, they say it's going down. They're projecting for that. And, and so uh, in spite of that, they keep making actions on the federal land to try to build up the population and it continues to go down. So whose fault is that? Nobody knows, right? Yeah. So, but to 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 respond to uh, Mr. Brennanthal, uh, if the county or if if the agencies come to the county uh, with their plan, in the absence of a county plan, really the county's only going to express their opinion and concerns about the agency's plan with a written plan, if the county had their own written plan, then uh, they're forced to compare how their plans work in concert with the county plan. You just nailed it what we've been doing for the last 20 years. These are my concerns. Well, thank you. The only real planning you've been doing that would be applicable right now is fire planning. There's nothing from the standpoint of harvest planning, other than what you can accomplish through fire planning, which we can have catastrophic fires. So how, how do you approach them about wanting to be involved in their planning phases for timber harvesting, other than to the, to the guise of trying to prevent extreme fires down here? I think right now you have to, you, first of all, you form that committee sitting underneath the supervisor that talks about that planning process. And we have the uh, Association of Retired uh, Federal Workers that's helping us look into what that's going to take to develop that committee and to make it work. They want to see it happen also. Uh, and then using that committee, then we take our plans that we developed here at a local level and we bring them into that committee and say, okay, you're looking at your next uh, timber projects, so you're looking at what they're putting out for your ASQ for the next year. Um, let's take and see how we can maximize this based on what we need here on our local level also. That's how I think we can get it done. And then that's prior to going out to any public uh, NGO piece. So we're incorporating what we have, incorporating what they have, trying to bring them together as per what coordination is asking for or demanding and what the federal laws say. And we're just doing that without pounding fists. We're just sort of, we're coming, we're working together as diplomats to make it happen. Realistically, the uh, agencies are going to come up less planning. I mean, I know. It's the Forest Service is going from 40 plan. million feet last year to 30 million feet this year. If BLM doesn't know where it's going to get its next after this year is 40 plus million feet, they don't know where they're going to get next year, the following year. I mean, they're, they're so, you know, caught up with uh, critical habitat. I know it is, it's, it's not possible. And that's why I'm saying if we don't get our plans developed now, we're going to be out planned. There's another way to look at it, this so called plan, and, and uh, is how to start it. Uh, you could take the, uh, the county lands and say they're being affected, or the management of these lands are being affected by A, B, C, D. And, and, uh, you could have a, a, a talking point or a, a county resolution about a particular point. Uh, the Agent Species Act and, and Spot Out. And of course, you're working on the fire plan, so you're going to have a good, a good statement about that one. You can have a statement of why the particular thing is, is affecting the county's lands or the county land and the county that belongs to the federal government. And, and what the effect you can have uh, some points 
to stand behind that, saying this is what we would do, this is what we feel is a problem. These are some of the solutions that the government may in incorporate in order to solve this issue. Then the onus uh, is on them to say, well, you're wrong about this, or, right. or we are working on this, and so on and so forth. Uh, that, that'd be a way to approach it. Uh, take all of those resource lines and say these are the particular issues that are causing these lines not to be managed. But we think they should be managed. Identify it and bring it in. Fire is one component of that. Fire, uh, yeah. You need to look at uh, LSR. How everything is set up, how it doesn't, you know, let's be frank, LSR shouldn't even belong on matrix lines. That does not even comply with the um, the original intent of the ONC Act. You know, they pretty much abandoned the position of LSR land because it's too difficult. Right, and that's what I'm trying to say is that a lot of this process that they've set up, the uh, administrative changes that they've done over the years, doesn't even comply with the ONC Act. Well, in a Northwest Forest Plan, doesn't it? No. no and that's the whole problem. Right. So how do we get back and how do we start shifting this? It's going to have to be done legislatively back in Washington. That's a big part of it. But I think there's some things we can do locally here with what we have. We're starting at CWPP. That health, safety, and welfare of the community and bringing into that through the NEPA analysis is huge because that's been missing. It's not there. And if I can show that we're having a cancer rate increase as a result of the smoke impacts in the summer times, that is good, and that has to be brought into the NEPA analysis, and, we're, and they have to coordinate that now, that's a huge piece of it. If we start showing that asthmatics, we've had three deaths in asthmatics as a result of smoke impacts, that's a huge piece. And then it's come back and said, okay, we understand your ESA needs. And we've just listed the spotted frog, and now we have the Pacific Fisher that they're going to put up on to lock up more land over on the east side of the county. But if we have uh, something in place that says our plan is this, and it includes preservation for these, which exceeds what you're asking for in your process, but yet can give us more in the management piece, they have to consider that. And that's where that coordination comes in, is we have something written that they have to be able to coordinate against. If we can give them a better plan than what they're giving us, how can they not? So what do you do, hire a, uh, a forester to go out and show them specifically, or mark trees, that this is what we're going to have to do to mitigate? I think it's something these, these very concerns? similar to what the ONC County Association has done by bringing in a specialist to be able to put together some information that shows where their information is wrong. See, the problem with the whole Endangered Species Act is they don't look at the potential major risk of what's out there. Right. You know, how are they going to lose critical habitat unless it's going to be logging or whatever. That, that's here and now. Yeah. They're not looking at, you know, it's microscopic. They're not looking at potential for catastrophic fire and huge loss of critical habitat. It's not in their consideration ever. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. If we can take that other scope and bring it in and broaden the picture and show it, we might have <coughs> We're the only ones that have that. In Jackson County, I can't think of another jurisdiction under FLIPMA that would really fall into. The cities would have something based on the health, safety, welfare of the communities, but they really don't have the, the real borders of those lands. So there's our the Some buffer. small towns do, like Roosh and place like that, but the yeah. wooey areas. But, but yeah. they don't have the financial resources to go put this type of stuff together. Heat Falls, Prospect, uh, those are the big impact areas, but they don't have the financial means to do something like this. So in reality, we're the only ones out there. We can bring them in and have them coordinate with us on this process uh, and work together as governments and say, this is where we're going. But um, ultimately, it has to be a county plan that, that deals with it. So obviously it's going to take resources from the county to, to develop it. Uh, yeah. Sort of like what we did with CWPP. Yeah. We developed that. I mean, it's the first time in, in history in the United States that anybody can find the like CWPP being developed with that much of a detail. The comprehensive analysis that we put into our CWPP that's coming out has never been done before. So if we have to start looking at a when we started that process, we researched it around the country. Joel, you were part of it. And we had to bring in outside agencies just to help understand the, the, 
vast complexity of what we were really doing. So is it going to be tested? Oh yeah, that's that's what. But if we don't change something and go do something a little more detailed, we're, we're doing the same thing in sanity again. It's more like, is it going to be resisted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm willing to fight for something that I can, put, yeah. I can say, wait a second, That's this right. is reality. I can fight for that. And have those components in our coordination plans that will be there, whether it's watershed protection or agriculture and harvesting and, and the fire. Active and have it all part of our, of our coordination plan. And, you, and that's kind of what I, I see Baker County did. They have it all um, categorized and how what their expectation and what their plan is for their county, and we have we don't have it. So uh, I think you talked about it before. How would you, if you assuming that you would do a plan? How would you start doing it? I said, you know, I think we talked about having an outline, saying this is what points you have to hit in, in the plan. But you almost have to develop a uh, some kind of a pre-report or something to say how how is this affecting the county not having this plan and, and, and not having the proper coordination how is it affecting the county and then some of them will say well what, what's, what, what's the problem here why are you doing all this and, and so on and, and you have to say, set up the, the base for why you're doing it in the first place purpose and need yeah, yeah the, the purpose and need but, but if you look at the table of contents uh, really breaks that down. Uh, yeah, it's several in my my mind. First, as a group, commissioners and NRAP, we're going to have to make a decision: is this a financial road that we're going to want to go down? Because ultimately, this is going to cost money, and I don't mean just ten thousand dollars. It's going to cost tens of thousands of dollars to do, put this all together properly. Uh, Joel, what are our CWPP costs? Yes, we were able to use Title III funds on it, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, I think it was 40 I, or 60,000. I don't. That sounds familiar, but I don't, I don't know the, the total cost of it at this point because we've had more. It's a, been a multi multi year process, yeah. and we've had uh, different contacts with, with contracts with different uh, consultants to help develop it. So I. I I don't know. Tracy probably would be the best person to know. But your coordination cost almost forty thousand dollars. Yeah. So this is going to be, in my mind, this is a very complex issue. It's going to cost a little bit of money. And I'm kind of asking for everybody to say, hey, this is important to the citizens of Jackson County. In my mind, or is this? Do we agree that we're going to spend some money here? Or I think you're going to have to decide whether the possibility of success would justify how much you're looking at spending. And if you're looking at the federal government and all the way down from the top that basically discounts what's going on at the county level or local level, you might just be tilting at windmills, you know. It, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's justifiable or not. I, I think the community wildfire protection plan theory, the clean water, you know, the, the risk of degradation of Landscapes, water supply, everything is something you can look at. But uh, is it going to be realistically something you can accomplish? And I mean, basically, you're trying to tell the agencies you're going to have to, you know, log more. You're going to have to thin more. You're going to have to have densities in your forests, especially in the woolly areas, that we're going to mitigate the chance of wildfire and you know substantially lessen it. Is that realistic? Well, and that's that's one of the other burdens yep. too here that you have to overcome is what they consider best science when you're developing the plan and what you're what you're using to develop that plan is does that meet their definition of best science? I don't even know what their definition of best science is. What does that entail? That's that's the part I was talking about with the ONC analysis. We had to bring in our own um, organization people to be able to put that that scientific analysis to it. To the R&P side and, and compare it and say that that science doesn't add up with this science. So, so when there's a difference in the plans, and one, you know, where we're looking at it to determine which one used best science, we need to know what that definition is. I mean, that would be Joel 
it, it's somewhat of a moving <laughs> target too. Right. And that's every year that will that'll mean something a little different. Yeah. Well, and, and best science actually is a, is a fairly litigated um, area of the law, and, and it really does come down to um, at some point the federal agency has to determine what is the science that they're willing to follow. You can get multiple peer-reviewed articles that say different things, and that is again. A, courts have found that that falls within the discretion of the agency to make a determination. They're the ones who are supposed to determine what best science is when they make their decisions, and so they're given a lot of discretion when it comes to for them to determining what best science is. Um, really, it comes down to not to use sort of a, uh, a term from a different area, but is there is there evidence or substantial evidence supporting their decision? And if there is, then that's the best science. And it may contradict be contradicted by other science, but it's not as simple as saying, well, we have five articles that say one thing, and we have seven that say the opposite, so the seven wins. That's not, it's not as simple as sort of weighing how many, who has the heavier pile of paper. And that's what it really seems to come down to, is a deference to There, There is a lot agencies. of deference to the federal agencies. So no matter how great of a plan you put together, they could kind of arbitrarily say, well, our science is better. Well, not only then you're they could win the lawsuit and still lose the war. You got science against science, and then you got the law. Yeah. And say, well, we don't care what the science is. The law is we're following the law. But uh, you can find best science. The people that are considered the experts in their field are, are the best scientists. Yeah, you can try. You can hire those people. You, I mean, each side has their experts, and we've been fighting this for 25 years in the environmental timber industry thing. There's you can get all the scientific expertise you want. When it's really generally comes out of the universities as a research. Thing. But it still goes back to that question of insanity. Does the county want to uh, continue with the status quo uh, and give up expecting a different outcome? Or we're looking at an investment, uh, a commitment in an investment to try and change that. And, and how you how you analyze that monetary value is beyond me. Good point. And ask when was the last time we had the conversation with federal agencies of our best science or anything else over their plans? That's what's going on right now at the LNC counties. No, in our county, in our to Jackson County. We've relied on those associations to do that for us. I don't know who you ask. Who would be able to they should be coming to us. It's a definitive yeah. answer. That's going to be determined when there's a dispute. And, and the third party would have to decide that. But when there's deference given to the federal government in almost every situation, I think we usually know what that outcome is going to be. Yeah, they're the ultimate authority. All right. I, I will say that in drafting, in our attempt at drafting a natural resource plan for the county, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll gain a lot of expertise and education in, in the development of that. So we do have something to argue at the table at that point. We've got some background. We're not listening to their plan and responding to it. Well, the other thing you have going for you is that you're speaking for the people in the county. And in the county, people in the county are being affected by everything that is done here with the natural resources. So. Uh, that's a lot of people, and every other county can rubber stamp that. That's in the West, basically. So you're, you're not only fighting for best science, you're fighting for the people of the county. You've got a lot of people that are satisfied with the status quo right now. They don't understand. They might not, but it's, it's you know, there's a lot of rhetoric and, and emotionalized rhetoric out there. That Who else can do it? City of Bedford isn't going to do it. Well, I certainly think it's a fight worth committing resources to as long as there's a defined plan of how, you know, an action plan of what we're going to do and that we have a good basis for why we think it's going to be effective. Um, because, like I say, it's been done many, many times to the same result. And, you know, unless there is something different and innovative and kind of a new approach, it seems like we are kind of throwing more money out. And frustration continues. I don't think there's very, been very many assertive accounts where the counties have succeeded, even though we're even tried. It's been kind of uh, laissez-faire sort of operation where we'll try this and we'll try that. 
that I think if the county wanted to do a plan, I think they would get quite a bit of support from the Lincoln County's organization and maybe even some funding, I guess. And, uh, and other organizations might come out of the woodwork to say, well, we're going to help you out. I think that would be tough. Looking for funding from the Lincoln County. Right? I think so too. <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe not that either. But, um, but I can see where you could get help. Well, I know that uh, I would be willing to work on such a plan, a natural resource, you know, or end of it, um, and, you know, potential loss to the county. I mean, you're looking at clean water, you're looking at clean air, you're looking at health, you're looking at, you know, economic, event. there's a lot of things going that, you know, the county can, can work from in a positive way. I, I, I support that. I'm in favor of working on it. Any other comments or questions? Do we want to? Uh, I don't think we're going to ask people to make a decision. Well, if we wanted to direct the NRAC, I mean. Yeah, you can direct the NRAC, but I would think if, if, it, were, if, it, would, if it would require the, the expenditure of county resources, the direction of county resources, we would need to. To make a specific agenda, yeah. There had to, I'd say, a sort of cut in recommendation for the NDRAC how to go forward, uh, how to proceed, looking at um, if there needs to be a, uh, a firm hired to look at this process, or if there's something there, I would want to see some kind of recommendation coming out of the NDRAC committee on how we can go forward so that we can make those decisions. There's a comment, I think we spent way too much with the coordination from we hired the last time. It could have been done a lot more cost effectively based on what other coordination areas have done for other places in the uh, Western states uh, as examples. I, if we're starting something brand new that's pr pretty unique other than what Baker County is doing, um, I don't know. I, I think we can sure take a stab at it without having to hire some outside firm to charge us fifty thousand dollars to put it together. I'm up for any kind of suggestions or recommendations. I'd suggest that we work on the commission set about purpose and need. We can maybe work on it, and then an outline. If we can get past purpose and need, the next step might be an outline of how we kind of sketch out an action plan. And, and this is an excellent thing around being a plan, but I, I guess that to, to kind of, I, I think Baker's county plan, I, I did take a look at it. I mean, I think it has some problems. I think it might have overreached at times. For example, it, it attempts to, to create a state level, a state county coordination, which there isn't really any support that I can find, where the state needs to coordinate state land decisions with the county, but that's what Baker County's plan um, attempts to do. Um, so I think they're overreaching. I think in a lot of parts, for example, I think it's, uh, and I don't have it in front of me, but they, they, they really have a lot of detail about, I believe it's ranch land. And they, they, they provide a lot of plans and specific planning as really to what should happen on ranch. But there are other sort of sections which are sort of almost a one sentence without any, there's no meat on them. And so I think that means it's going to be a plan. If you look at other county plans, and I'm outside of this, but if you look at sort of, we have a land use plan in the county, we have a comp plan. Um, that is a very detailed, data-driven document on why certain land is, is comprehensively planned for certain activities versus others. I think that, that's sort of the level that may be needed to, to provide as opposed to, I think if one of Baker County's plan is that their policy is that there's no alternative energy development on federal lands in Baker County. Like if that, that, that's all it says, it doesn't have any rationale or guidance or, or sort of what would be the purpose of this no alternative energy development on federal lands in Baker County. What's alternative energy? I mean by definition. Uh, it's solar, uh, solar wind and, and uh, hydro. No, I think no, right. they may they may throw biomass in there. But that was sort of but like that was the plan, but to me I read that as more of a policy as opposed to a plan. And so I think that if we look at sort of FLIPMA, it, it talks about that to coordinate with local government plans. So I think it needs to be more than just sort of a policy statement if we're if, if 
county wants to go down the direction of developing a resource management plan, it has to be much more than just policy statements that we think that there needs to be increased or you know return to sustainable harvesting levels. We need that we don't want to see just to take something out of Baker County's policy that they have a policy of no alternate energy development. So I think we need to actually have a, a much more of a, of a plan for what we would expect to see as opposed to, to one sentence policy statements. And they do do that in some of the areas. So there needs to be a cost benefit analysis on what, I mean, we can put together a plan for very little, but get very little benefit from it, or, yeah. Spend a little bit. And, and they actually state policy that their energy is, the plan is their policy. Right. And really not their plan. Right, but they, yeah, but that's, I mean, you can say that, but. Yeah. But our county is different, and Absolutely. I would trust our resource committee to, to know oh. our counties. Absolutely, no, that's why I was just sort of pointing out that, that if we're looking at Baker County, and then I think they have a really good outline, but in, it, to, to sort of give it what this group has talked about, sure. um, the consideration that it would be yeah. uh, my advice to sort of uh, go a little deeper than just sort of <coughs> policy statements, but actually looking and building a, a, a plan. Well, it's kind of a touchy thing. You know, if you start off with a purpose and need, you almost have to cover some of those. No, I think that's things. absolutely. But I think that drives what your plan. I think your policy statements and your purpose and needs, your purpose and needs drives your policy, which then drives the plan. But you need yes. to go one step beyond just here's our purpose and needs, and this is this is our policy of what we'd like to see. I think you need to, to go down another step. Yeah. More specifics. Yeah. Right. And here's an example. So I read through our. Uh, <coughs> Our, our ordinance, it's under 1231.06, sub 3, sub 4. Uh, basically on page 54, we talked about recreation development, and we talked about transportation. But when we talked about transportation, we, we're talking about projects subject to transportation system planning under Oregon's land use laws. Well, but basically, that that basically sets offside all the federal land right of We're not even talking about that in that first paragraph. And then, if we talk about the second, uh, for projects that are not subject to transportation system planning under land use laws, I would evaluate projects based on the benefit to Jackson County. Um, it may include expanded access to federal land, reduced travel times, but it doesn't talk about uh, anything about a serious <clears throat> how this is going to interact with the federal uh, travel management plan that we just went through. So that the Forest Service just went through the travel management plan, but we, in our own in our own ordinance, we don't even cover that we're going to be involved with that travel management plan from the beginning, or we're going to have those discussions prior to going to NGO and all that kind of stuff. So we're following our ordinance, and staff is doing what they're supposed to be doing as per ordinance. But it's not detailed specific enough for the things that we have concerns over, and that's where I was, that's where I keep saying we need to dig a little deeper and have a little more detail as we go forward. Because if we have these concerns, we have to identify them, list them, and then next time next year when uh, Supervisor McWhorter says we're going to re reevaluate the travel management plan, we have something written down that says, oh, by the way, we have a local ordinance that says this, this, and this. Let's talk. Like we had talked about, we our concerns with searching us and rescue, training, and fire management right. over those closed roads, those closed and it's not even listed. Access yeah. to fire. Yes. I mean, because frankly, Jackson County is responsible for all search and rescue in the county on federal lands. We have to go. They don't take care of that. We have to go pick them up and patch them up and take them to the hospital. So, have, making sure that we have access to that is critical for the health, safety, and welfare of our recreational community. But that stuff's not really listed in here. So there's lots of details that we're not covering. That's just one example I just wanted to point out real quick. Baker County talks about it, what I read theirs, but it's, I don't think it's inclusive enough that it could go further. I think this is a good work. I mean, I think you can use this as your outline. I mean, working off the policies, plan. I think you definitely need to have some outside resources if you want to be able to use justify your requests. And there's a lot of good information in, in the work that uh, Baker County did. Uh, there's, I have a lot of suggestions for edit and additions, but still, it, it certainly gets you started. 
I would agree with Joel too. I, I could see more policy statements in that. And I, I mean, there's plan statements too, but there are definitely policy statements. So we get to be careful with that. Okay. Well, do we have any last comments or questions? Sure. I just wanted to, um, I'm from the Applegate Partnership Watershed Council, and I just wanted to throw out our perspective with dealing with the federal government, which is, I think, a little better than Jackson County's, and I'm not saying it's great. It's been terrible. It's really good right now. But um, I think you're probably all familiar with the Applegate Adap Adaptive Management Area, which is a federally designated area, which basically says the people in that area have a seat at the table, which is, I think, what you guys are really wanting, right? And that's not to say we've been there for 35 years uh, working to get that AMA in place, and now it's been in place for quite a while. And I'm not saying we get everything we want, but we do have a seat at the table. And um, it's collaborative. So in other words, we sit down at the table with the BLM and the U.S. Forest Service and state agencies and such. So it's a collaborative thing. We're not saying do it our way or we're not going to be here. We, we can't do that. We know that. And these guys all come with, 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 with science. I think Commissioner Breedenthal is correct for what you've been presented here that in order for you to have a seat at the table, you need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, they're going to be doing the same thing they've been doing for years. But I'm wondering if the resources that you might spend, I think you should really look at the big picture. The resources you might spend, which is not tens of thousands, but I think 100,000 or more, hundreds of thousands, to create this plan, to present it to the feds, you don't want to get the same reaction back. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on. I mean, that's been what you've been getting, I think. Um, it's really a lot of money to put local science forward. That, that's, that's a huge resource. If you, can rely on, if you can rely on the agencies to at least present science good and bad and then get everybody looking at it. That's a, that's a great way. But I think I, I would just sit back a little bit and think about the possibility of pursuing a more collaborative path and not, and not saying we want to seat at the table, we want to be present, we want to give you our two cents. It's, it's more perhaps creating the resources to put forward those two cents knowing what you're talking about, which I think is part of what Commissioner Bridenthal is talking about, of that plan. But, uh, uh, for instance, in the AMA, if we don't have science-based suggestions to put forward, they could care less, and that's the, that's the end of it. But we actually put something forward, and we have a couple studies to say, this is why we think you should do that. At least it's considered. And I'm not saying it happens all the time. It might happen half the time, or more likely a third of the time if, at best. But I, I would just, you know, as, as a taxpayer, if, 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 the, if the goal is to create a plan to contest the government and go into litigation, I'm paying, it, paying for that litigation on both sides. I'm paying the feds, and I'm paying you guys, the county. And I, I don't want to do that, personally. So, I, and I'm not saying what you're, what you're doing here isn't a good direction, but I would seriously think about collaboration. Um, we, uh, through the partnership and through, uh, called Oregon Solutions from the governor's office, we put a, we had a, uh, a collaborative panel put together for a year and at, at the panel, everybody sat down at the table. We had the two county commissioners, Commissioner Smith and Dwight, something from Joe County. They were the heads, and we had the feds on one side, the, the state on the other, and a bunch of NGOs in between. And we were trying to come up with the science-based solutions for the Applegate River specifically, and can this be, can we continue to mine this? Can we not? What are the, what's the science, this, that, and the other, you know? And it was pulling teeth to get those agencies to sit down. And you could see the glares going back between feds and state. Doug, I think you've probably seen that. So it's, I'm not, you know, but, but it's, it's a way to go. You get a conversation going, and you get these people to actually look at each other instead of talking on the phone. And if, and if the county was able to create something like that, and, and maybe you can get the governor's office, to, you know, Oregon Solutions threw in 50 grand or so to make that happen. So if you can, that's a collaborative approach. I'm just saying look, 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 at, look at that because it would cost the county a fraction, and, and maybe you can at least get your voice heard. And, and Jackson County is unique as far as forest. It's dry forest land here. It's not, you know, it's not the wet forest that they're used to up north, and it takes special management practices. And the main thing we have in the county with the forests are fire. I mean, that's the biggest 
concern. And if, if, if the county can get a policy pushed through through the agencies to get that reduced as much as possible, Mother Nature's going to do what she does, but at least a management plan, that would be huge. So I, you guys can back, go back to your thing. But that, and if you want any help from the, from the partnership, I mean, we've got people out there that have been dealing with these agencies for 25 years, and we can tell you what didn't work and maybe what did work. And a lot of it depends on who you're talking to you know, at the BLM or Forest Service, and, and so much of that depends, uh, believe me, they take their march, marching orders from Washington. So you can have a good guy down here, but if the Washington tells them no, he all he can do is say no, you know, so just, just, just a thought. I don't know if there's other. Yeah, so I, I think, I, think I, I agree with you from a collaborative standpoint. I've been involved with a number of those collaboratives for Forest Health. Uh, and I think if we, if Jackson County produces this plan, it brings us to the table to collaborate over a solution. You have a clear perspective to collaborate That's from. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't think it was to mutually point. exclusive at all. To and it's, you know, it sounds a lot better, collaboration versus litigation, believe me. That'll go over a lot easier. Coordination, <laughs> coordination is a litigation. Coordination is a law, but collaboration is another process. But, and when not NGOs have, but government to government has a power of coordination, for sure. And it's not litigation. It is what we're working on in the plan. But our first, our first uh, uh, communication would be that collaborative effort to recognize our plan and to get what we want in the county. Uh, so uh, I've seen that work, and, and so it's going to be possible. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. All right. Then we will adjourn. Two twenty-two. I'm sorry. Three. Two twenty-two. Good morning, Mr. Bean.